All right, good morning everybody. This is Charles Barnett and um, we are going to talk to you today about questions or excuse me, excuse me, answers to four fasting questions. Answers to four fasting questions. Now, if you're like me and when you've done these things and uh, I know throughout my, she's going to be 34 years of living for Jesus, um, of all the times we've prayed and fasted. And there were some questions that I had along the way. And so uh, I have discovered that many others have the same questions. So I am going to answer these questions according to the word of the Lord. And hopefully it will help you. It will give you the answers you've been looking for. It'll benefit you and help you on your fasting journey. So, first of all, we are going to go to Matthew chapter 6, where Jesus, Jesus Christ, Lord and Savior, God manifest in the flesh, starts to give us some insight here. And we're going to go to verse 17 and 18 of the book of Matthew chapter 6. And it reads, But you, you, when, when you fast, uh, it's not about if we're going to fast or if we believe in fasting or we don't believe in fasting. No, Jesus says, you, when you fast. In other words, you and I are going to fast if we're going to be his followers. If you decide, I don't fast because it's too hard. Um, I don't fast. I don't do it. Uh, my leaders don't do it. Well, you're not following Jesus then. Straight to the point. So Jesus is saying here, he's laying down the law because he's God and he can. He's Lord of all. He says, when you fast, and here then he starts to explain what to do. He says, anoint your head and wash your face so that you do not appear to men or to the population or to your community to be fasting, but to your father who is in secret, in the secret place. Like only God should know we're fasting, right? And your father who sees in secret will reward you openly. Okay, now, Jesus is not nullifying and doing away with corporate fasting, where the body of Christ, the local church, um, which our people get together and decide to fast. Okay, that's throughout the Bible. But what, he, what he's saying is, that's not where it starts. Where it starts is you and him in your own personal secret place. Now, let me break this scripture down real quick. When he says, um, anoint your head and wash your face, yeah, many people think that you got to pour oil, olive oil, frankincense and all that all over your head. No, that's not what he's talking about. What he's saying is, do your regular hygiene. In other words, put your hair products in. You know, back when I was, <laughs> back when I was younger, my Latino friends used to throw tres flores to slick their hair back, to grease it back. And my African-American friends used to use blue magic. That would uh, keep the sheen looking real nice. And, and then when they started to get the curls, the jerry curls and the classy curls, then they got more products and started using curl activators and whatnot. And they would even wear like a shower cap to bed. You know, it keeps everything in place, doesn't, you know, don't get all over the pillow the whole bit. That's what he's saying here. You know, and then after that, jail, you know, Paul Mitchell and all that stuff. But that's what he's saying. Because back then they would use an oil to get their hair back, you know. So what he's saying is use your hair products, wash your face, go through your same hygiene routine every single day so that you do not appear unto people that you're fasting because Back in Jesus' days, especially the Pharisees and the religious leaders, and the, they were real hypocritical to show that they were fasting and holy. They, would, they wouldn't do their hair. They wouldn't wash their face. You know, we're talking about a dusty, grimy culture back then. So, you know, you washed your face and somebody didn't wash their face. It was really evident more then than it is now, especially you live in the desert, right? And so Jesus was saying, go about your same hygiene purposes. Brush your teeth, 
wash your face, do your hair, right? Put uh, underarm deodorant on. If you put cologne or perfume on, do that too. Do your normal routine so that nobody knows you're fasting. And the reason for that is, is because Jesus goes on to say that the people that show off their fasting, the people that let everybody know they're fasting um, outside of corporate fasting, he says, that's your reward. In other words, Jesus now backs away and will not reward you for your fasting at all. You're boasting about your fasting and what the people say, oh, they're so holy and powerful. That's your reward. That's it. You just got a compliment. That's all you're going to get. So, Jesus takes fasting real seriously because fasting is one of the most powerful uh, practices and lifestyles of real followers and disciples of Jesus Christ. It's what they practiced uh, in the early church. But let's answer some questions here. Let's answer some questions before we dig in deeper. There's some more scripture I'd like to share with you that will help us out. Um, number one. Why do I feel so carnal while fasting? I feel so weak and carnal and man, I just can't even do it when when lunch comes around, I just got to eat, right? Why do I feel so carnal? You know, I'm trying to focus cuz when you fast, you're supposed to focus more on prayer, study of the word of God, you're supposed to um isolate yourself away from things that would distract you from uh, getting really close to God and to, from completing this sacrifice, right? But all the distractions of life, all the passions that we have, all of our things that we want to do, we want to partake in, it becomes a struggle. The struggle is real. And so then we realize for the first time, why am I so carnal? Why can't I do this? Why am I struggling so much? Why do I feel so carnal? while I'm fasting, you know? And the reason for that is, is because your flesh does not want to die. Your carnal passions does not want to die. Your carnal passions wants to survive. It wants to feed its lust. It wants to feed its, uh, its um, uh, entertainment. It wants its, it want what it's want. If it feels good, do it. That's what your flesh is going to do, right? And so when you're fasting, you're denying and you're disciplining and you're killing that passion. You're killing that lust. And therefore, it's going to fight back. And it is hard. It is not easy to fast. It is hard to skip meals. It is hard to go against the grain of your flesh and culture. Excuse me. So then the reason we feel so carnal is because it's a revelation to us that we are carnal. The reason you and I feel so carnal when we're fasting, it's because we're figuring out for the first time or every time we fast, which is unfortunate, that we really are carnal and that without fasting, we're going about this the wrong way. We're going about this the carnal way and we're really not as spiritual as we really think we are. And so we find out that we're really carnal and that we're really spiritually weak and it really bombards us. And so to answer that question, why do I feel so carnal when I'm fasting? It's simple. Because we are carnal. We have the lust of the eye. We have the lust of the flesh. We have the pride of life. And it wars in our members. It does. It's a war inside here. It's a war in between our ears. It's a war inside our you know, emotions. It's a war. It really is. And so you feel carnal because you are carnal. And that's why you and I have to fast because we are carnal. And we have to fast so that we can become spiritual and that we can uh, be powerful in, our, in the spirit. And then we will become uh, uh, sensitive spiritual beings instead of carnal spiritual beings. So that is the reason why. It's because we are carnal and should be a signification to us that we really need to keep fasting and we need to not give up and we need to have a consistent uh, pattern of fasting throughout our life because we are carnal. All right. Number two, why do I experience God's anointing during and after fasting? And the reason you and I experience God's anointing during and after God's fasting is because we're focused on him. 
and because we're killing the distractions from him. Not only that, when you put the passions and sinful inclinations of our flesh to death, now the spirit begins to break forth and you're going to experience it. You're going to feel it. You're going to see it. You're going to know it. And um, at, during fasting and even after fasting, you're going to experience God's anointing, God's power, the gifts of the spirit, the fruit of the spirit. You know, um, you're going to experience it. And the reason why is because you're letting Jesus win. You're letting your spirit man win over your carnal man. Ladies, you're letting your spirit lady win over your carnal lady. That's why. You start to feel God's anointing because now God is supreme. You've made him actual Lord for reals. And so God is going to be able to flow. So it's kind of like this. You got this pipe, this pipeline. And there's a bunch of fresh purified water that's flowing through that pipeline. But then there's... Uh, 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 something getting in there and clogging it. And it gets clogged up to where it can't flow. And 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 when it's first clogging up, the, the flow begins to lessen until it's just a trickle. And before you know it, then it builds up to a point where it's completely uh, uh, dammed up the flow. It's like a, a dam uh, that blocks water. Kind of that's what happens to us after we fast is that when we don't continue to fast and we let our carnal person come back into the picture and we start to see the God's anointing lessen and lessen and lessen as we come, become more carnal and carnal and carnal like we used to be. But see, when you begin to fast and you begin to remove these things and you begin to get these things out of the way, you begin to purge and clean these things out of your life, you're clearing out that pipeline so that the water begins to flow and you start to see the trickle again. Then you start to get more flow. And before you know it, it's a gushing uh, uh, river flowing out of that pipeline. So that is uh, the best uh, illustration that I can explain to you of why is it that you and I feel experience an increase in God's anointing when we fast and right after we finish fasting. You see, here's another reason too. We experienced a full magnitude of God's anointing, His supernatural power. I mean, all kinds of stuff. And that is because we're allowing Him to flow. And we're allowing Him to lead. And a lot of times when we're fasting and, and praying, we become more sensitive to the prompting of His Spirit. Then when He prompts us to do something, we obey. And then now we're in the flow. Instead of going against the flow. All right. Number three, why do I experience, uh, excuse me, why is miracles unleashed more in a greater magnitude during and after fasting? Why is miracles, why is the supernatural unleashed more in a greater magnitude during and after fasting? And that's the, the reason for that is because of this, because now we're going in the flow of the Holy Spirit. Okay, the Holy Ghost is directing us. The Holy Ghost is flowing through us. Instead of our carnal flesh flowing through our carnal um, agendas, we got our own plans for the day. And so when, uh, when we're moving according to our own plans for the day and we don't have prayer and fasting in our life, then when the Holy Ghost tries to prompt us, we're not listening to Him. And we're flowing according to, well, I got to get this done. I want to do this and I want to do that. And so then the, the, the miracles are happening over here, but you and I are moving over here. And also too is when we do have some times of devotion and we're singing to God and praising God, because the Bible says he inhabits the praises of his people. So you can see that anybody that will sing praises unto God and have some type of devotion, God is going to inhabit those praises. He's going to come into those praises. But that doesn't necessarily mean we have his anointing. That just means that he's coming to meet us because he inhabits the praises of his people. And he wants to give us his grace and his mercy. But if that doesn't happen because we're good, because we're fasting, because we're praying, because we're, you know, that that is just a small trickle of his anointing because we're trying to make contact with him. So God will make contact with you. But why is it that you only experience, it seems like we experience 
a minimum of God's supernatural miraculous during um, during praise and during some devotion versus fasting, especially if you go on extended fasting, you know, beyond one day and um, or even if you go on a three day fast or a longer day fast, maybe seven days, 21 days, 40 days, whatever, especially if you go beyond that to a absolute water fast where you're just drinking water and you're not eating anything. Boy, are you going to hit the mother load of miracles, signs, and wonders. Woo! I felt Holy Ghost when I said that. I mean, you watch it. You go through the Bible. You look through your Bible and you'll see it. The reason for that is because now you're not on your own agenda. You're on the agenda and the kingdom of the Spirit. You're not on your own kingdom. You're now flowing in the kingdom of the Spirit of God. God's kingdom. Okay? And where the word of the king is, there's power. That's authority. So that's why when you're fasting and the Holy Ghost can actually walk and live and move through you. And you know, the demons will even notice a difference because they see you and I today and oh, they see Charles. But as soon as Charles goes on some fasting, they don't see Charles anymore. They see Jesus. Jesus starts to radiate through Charles. Now they see Jesus instead of seeing Charles because Jesus is emanating through. The flesh is no longer blocking the radiance of the power of God. So yes, and you'll look at it. The Bible also says, these kind can only go out but by prayer and fasting. You know, they couldn't cast, the di disciples couldn't cast these demons out. Jesus said, those kind of devils can only go out through prayer and fasting. It can't be that you just have a devotion to me and you praise me and, you know, you you follow me. You you know, you're, you like to listen to what I got to say. He says, no, you got to pray and fast to get to this level. And there's one, one disciple also says that he talks about faith to cast out devils, howbeit this kind goeth not out but by prayer and fasting. So I kind of mesh them two together because in order to cast out devils, in order to have any type of miracles, you have got to have faith. And faith is what unleashes the supernatural. So if you want faith to cast out devils, you want faith to have miracles, you want to ex experience this, just this unleashing of the magnitude and maximum amount of miracles from God, you got to pray and fast. If you're not praying and fasting, it doesn't matter what other practices you do, you're always going to experience a minimal. That's just the way it is. Okay, so more prayer, more fasting, more miracles, more experiences of the kingdom of God in your life. So it's very important. Number four, how do I keep my advancement attained while fasting? Like sometimes I feel like I hit a new dimension. Sometimes I got to a new level. Sometimes I feel like uh, the onion was peeled. The outer layer, the dry, crusty layer was peeled out. And now there's this fresh, boom, explosion in my life. And even more of my calling and my gifts was revealed. Um, how do I keep that? How do I not go back? How do I keep what uh, I've attained in fasting? Okay, well, I, I got the answer for you. And that is simply this. It's in Isaiah chapter 58. And it's, it starts in verse 6. G, uh, well, it wasn't Jesus at that time. It was Jehovah speaking through the prophet Isaiah. Later, he revealed himself as Jesus. But he says, Is not this the fast that I have chosen? This is what God is speaking through the prophet Isaiah. To loose the bonds of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, to let the oppressed go free, and that you break every yoke. Now, if you keep, he goes all, he keeps saying all, a lot of stuff here. He's saying that if you pray and fast, God is going to step on the scene and start breaking spiritual barriers and spiritual strongholds. But then he's also going to require you and I to break the physical ones. Like if, if, if we know somebody is oppressing somebody and being unjust to somebody, or maybe we're being uh, unjust to somebody, or we're oppressing somebody, we need to go make it right. Okay? But if you'll keep going all the way to... Uh, verse 13. If you turn away your foot from the Sabbath, from doing your own pleasure on my holy day, and call the Sabbath a delight, a holy day unto the Lord, honorable unto Him. Okay. What he's saying is, to keep this going, it would be best to have one day a week to fast. You don't always have to do a three-day fast. It's good, and we should. I've done three-day fast. I've done a four-day fast. 
Um, back in the day, I was really, really skinny, and four days is as far as I could go. I'd be so weak. Um, pray for me. I'm gonna. I want to attempt to go longer now that I'm heavier. Um, I have more muscle mass, and I'm 177 pounds instead of 130 pounds, and so I think I might be able to do better job at this. But I've all, I've only gone beyond three days, and my fasting has been water only. Now, now that I'm older, um, I'm more healthier. I I do prep myself, and like it's like a Daniel type diet. Daniel fast is actually a Daniel's diet. It's how he lived. Um, I will do that. I'll eat uh, fruits and vegetables in preparation to get to that absolute fast where I'm just drinking water. And uh, I, I uh, urge you and challenge you to do that. It's biblical that once you've finished your Daniel fast, um, proceed to absolute fasts. Once you've done it, if you're doing a 21 day or a 40 day, once you're done with that Daniel fast, don't stop there. Now, do a 24-hour fast with just drinking water. You're going to find out that you're going to be able to make it. And you're going to be able to make it better than what you thought you could because you prepped yourself. Then once you've done that, go back to eating some fruits and vegetables for another day or two and then try three days with just water. And you're going to be surprised on how you're going to be able to do it. You're going to be able to accomplish it because you prepped. And then you're going to see, wow, wow, wow. If you thought Daniel fast was good, you ain't seen nothing yet. So please, please don't stop there. So what he's saying here in Isaiah chapter 58 is that, man, all kinds of things are going to break loose. But how do you keep it? He says, have a holy day. Okay? Have a fasting day. Now, back in the Old Testament, it used to be the Sabbath day, which was a Saturday. And in the New Testament... The Apostle Paul changed the holy day, the Sabbath day. He didn't think it was right under grace that we should have the uh, God uh, uh, a day for God the, on the last day of the week, which was Saturday. So he moved it to the first day of the week, which was Sunday. And that's kind of how people got hung up on Sundays um, in doing their devotion to God is because the Apostle Paul said, let's give God the first day of the week under grace since under the law of Moses, we gave him the last day. So that's why that happened. Now, depending on your lifestyle, depending on your work schedule, sometimes you may not be able to do that. But as long as you have a day that you can consecrate to God, do that. So how do you keep what you got during fasting? How do you keep it? By continually to fast at least one day a week. And maybe you might be only able to fast eight hours. That's better than no hours. Maybe you can go to full 24 hours. If so, do it once a week. If there's something that comes up in your life where you can only do it once or twice a month, where you're only doing one day, that's better than none, no times a month. So this is questions to what people commonly answer. Why do I feel so carnal while I'm fasting? We answered that. Why do I experience God's anointing during and after fasting? We answered that. Why is miracles unleashed more in a greater magnitude during and after fasting? We answer that. And how do I keep my advancements attained while fasting? We answer that. So these are the most commonly asked questions and we answered them for you. So I hope you will take this to heart and um, let's really uh, try to be spiritual because that's how spiritual maturity really comes. Um, you can be religious as, as all get out and you can go ahead and uh, be habitually religious um, for years and not gain spiritual maturity because these things only come through the way Jesus Christ said it should come through. And he says, when you pray, when you fast, when you give, those three things are paramount if you're going to be a follower and a disciple of Jesus Christ. So prayer is most important, fasting is most important, and giving of your yourself, your time, and your resources to the kingdom of God. Not to religion, but to God, to follow Jesus Christ, to follow his word to the T. And then you are going to experience, you're going to experience an unleashing of God's spirit in your life like no other. Now, 
Some people are afraid to do this because they know that the devil is going to come after them. But don't forget that when you're carnal, you're, you're trapped and deceived and a slave to the devil already. So going back to that means you're actually letting him handcuff you. So if he fights you, it's because you're no longer bound by him. Now you can fight back. So if you fast and pray and the devil unleashes all hell on you, that means he's afraid of you and you're stronger than him through that anointing and that advancement you've gotten through the fasting so you can attack him through spoken word, through prayer. You can uh, unleash angels, pray God to send angels against him. Now you have authority and power with anointing that you can destroy him. So don't quit. Don't back down. Don't cower. Stand up, step up, and speak. Preach. Prophesy. And you will destroy and shatter that which is attacking you because no weapon formed against you shall prosper. So don't back down. Stay praying and stay fasting and God will show up for you a hundred times more powerful and evident than in your normal weekly rituals. In Jesus' name. God bless you. This is Charles Barnett answering the questions about fasting. And... Um, I hope they blessed you. So please share this. Uh, watch it again. I'm going to share it on YouTube. Share, uh, subscribe, and please share, share, share this. Because you and I are not the only ones that are have these questions in our minds and hearts. And uh, we need them answered so that we can become powerful um, disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you. You be blessed in Jesus' name.